So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Hutchins. I'm the Vice President for Information Services at the University of Alberta. Welcome to the NSU Open Showroom Library, especially if this is your first time here. And this is the Cantilla Gallery, and we're thrilled to host tonight's event, which is uh, celebrating the women who tell our stories. And we're proud to have, like, uh, like Chris was saying, this is a collaboration between the NSU Elvin Sherman Library, the Broward County Libraries, and the NSU Department of Communication, Media, and the Arts. I always screw, I always get the two. I had to burn that into my head, so thank you. Um, but it, it is thrilling. We really want to showcase our NSU faculty and staff to our community. And conversely, we want the community um, to come into this building. Because this building is open to anybody that lives, works, or goes to school in Broward County. So definitely take advantage of this. So this came together very quickly. Back in January, my colleague uh, from the Broward County Library is Michael Bryant. Where are you? There he is, right there. Um, he, Michael handles or oversees adult programming for the Broward County Libraries. And he reached out to see how we could develop a program that would embrace what this theme is, which is celebrating women who tell our stories. And specifically, it's women, past and present, who have contributed to all forms of still storytelling and media. So I thought, like, I don't know, but being the good librarian that I am, I knew where to start, and that was with Dr. Shanti Bruce. And uh, Dr. Shanti Bruce and Michael Bryant and her team got together within a month, and now we're here, and this was, this is excellent because I'm getting to see all the inner workings of the Mako Media Network. I got interviewed, I'm seeing how everything's made, so I really enjoyed this. Um, so uh, right now, let me see, before I close my comments, I had to flip that over because uh, you guys came to, to hear the ladies from the Mako Media Network, but not me. But I do want to thank the people that made this happen. So it's the Broward County Libraries, the team from the Broward County Libraries, it is uh, the team from the Department of Communication, Media, and the Arts. Those are our collaborators. Our sponsors, Balloonatics, the Gloria Sherman Endowment Fund, and you guys are really going to share in about 45 minutes. Hungry Howie's is going to be our pizza sponsor, and they'll be bringing pizza. So with no further ado, it's my pleasure to now introduce my friend and colleague, Broward County Library Director, Allison Grubbs. My cheat codes are a little more uh, on paper than off the cuff like Jim. But hi, good evening. I am Allison Grubbs. I am the director of Broward County Libraries. I am delighted to be here tonight to encourage women to tell their stories. Being storytellers is what defines us as a species. Arguably, gender is a filter of experience in the stories that ensue. Women love to tell our stories, and we always have, and describing our humanity, our inner and our outer worlds, is as natural to us as breathing. No matter what the medium of our era might be, women are first-person narrators, storytellers, documentarians. We speak the truth, we spin fables. We tell our stories in defiance, in remembrance, in celebration. And we have concealed our gender and we have flaunted it. The opposable thumb is irrelevant. Humans are the creatures who tell stories. The world has listened to a woman tell stories since Sumerians carved the cuneiform characters of their script into clay. The earliest named author in world history was in Heduana, high priestess of Inanna in the 23rd century BCE. She told her story with verse and invented myth. Some scholars debate the attribution of such significant work to a woman, but many hear an authentic, powerful female voice standing in her divine authority. So let's listen to her. The world listened when Murasaki Shikibu told her story and invented the genre of the novel. A noble woman in 11th century Japan, she told her story about the intrigues of court life in the Heian period, not cut with the stylus, but calligraphied with brush and ink by scribes on fold after fold of precious handcrafted paper. Like in Heduana's writings, the originals are lost to time, but what survives are her words, duplicated endlessly and considered literary masterworks to this day. Read her and know her from the tale of the Genji and the diary of Lady Murasaki. Across time, the world has been full of stories, listeners, and readers. 
And this will never change, although our recording implements and media evolve continuously. And I urge women not to wait for an example or a forerunner to step forward and to express, report, and shape their own narratives. As in the examples just given, we are leaders, we are game changers, and we are women with words. Your stories are today's literature and tomorrow's history. Raise your voice, open your laptop, we are poised to hear your unique construct. I would give that exhortation to the three exceptional young women to hear <laughs> yes. the three exceptional young women on our panel today and to all women in media or any other field. No one else has your life history. No one else can see through your eyes. Don't step back and let someone else tell your story or one that is on your heart. And above all, I, ex I invite women to accept encouragement and in its absence, empower yourself to tell your own stories. I will be among those watching and listening to how women's stories are told through print, broadcast, and digital media, and whatever will come next. Broward County Library is an eager partner for celebrating women who tell our stories. It aligns with our broader ongoing commitment to empowering women to, to, uh, in the community to speak their truth in the medium of their choosing. We encourage and facilitate individuals of all ages, all pronoun choices, and all cultures to write, speak, journal, and publish your stories using our resources. So it's been my pleasure to speak with you today, and I look forward to an engaging panel discussion. And it is now my privilege to introduce Dr. Shanti Bruce, who is a professor and chair for NSU's Department of Communication, Media, and the Arts in the Halmas College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wow, right? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Women's History Month, what better way to celebrate than to be here with all of you and the amazing women from the Department of Communication, Media, and the Arts and our student media. So um, I will say a quick shout out, thank you to um, our partners at the Alvin Sherman Library, the Broward County Library Division. It's, it's amazing to be working with you and lots of fun. Uh, yeah, DCMA is full of a lot of smart, strong women, and I'm thrilled for you that you get to hear from some of them um, today. So it's my pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Chris Delboni, over here. Uh, so she has a really impressive bio that you can read in here, and I will tell you that I was so impressed with her that I asked her to come to NSU and to join us and to direct student media, and lucky for us, she said yes, and, yep. and she's not only directing it, she is transforming it. She is creating opportunities uh, for students like today. They are producing work that is worthy of awards. They are off to an award ceremony very soon. We're organizing a bus as we speak, right? Um, so these women are going places, and congratulations to all of you, and I look forward to the panel. Allison, Michael, everybody for being here. We're so excited to have this first collaboration, which we hope will be the first of many. And I'm extremely excited to uh, be leading a panel with three amazing women I've been working with since August of last year when I became part of NSU's family. And, and uh, let me start by introducing uh, Nicole Shaker here, is the former editor in chief of Make a Media Network The Current. Let me just say briefly that we just rebranded. Uh, we have been student media for many, many, many years. And as I came in, uh, we rebranded to Make a Media Network. And to be able to not just integrate the three media I'm going to introduce now, but also to be more involved with the community, like I said. So Make a Media Network is is your media, not just ours, not just NSU. So uh, Nicole Shaker was the uh, editor-in-chief when I came in. She took over as the editor-in-chief of The Current, now Make a Media Network, The Current, and she's now an editor, still an editor with us. Uh, she's no longer editor-in-chief, but she is uh, uh, still a, a very important part of The Current. 
Uh, then we have Alex Hernandez right next to her. Uh, she is the co-station manager of formerly known as Radio X, now Maker Radio. And uh, Alex was handpicked, selected by Joe Mari, who is the current uh, station manager, to take over next semester as Joe Mari will graduate. And then we have our dear general manager, Paulina Riojas, with her family here with us as well. And thank you so much. Paulina is the general manager of Mago TV, formerly known as SUTV. So Paulina, let me start with you. I'm gonna ask each one of you, but let me start with you to, yes. <laughs> thank you. My phone? It's just to give the time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so, uh, Paulina, let me start with you. I'm going to ask you to please briefly introduce yourself and tell us what drew you to the medium. Okay, so hi guys, I'm Paulina Riojas. I'm the station manager for Miku TV. Um, I'm a PBS intern, so in the fall I was working with Kid Vision and now I'm working with Check Please, which focuses on uh, food around South Florida. Um, I'm also the co-producer for the Mental Stigma, which um, talks about mental health among um, mental health concerns among men. We're actually um, the finalists. We got we were selected for the Florida Association of Broadcast Journalists. So 12 entries out of two were the finalists. So we're going to hear back. Um, we're going to be winning later in April. Um, and what drew us to the media was really my sister. She's always been. Um, that voice in the house telling me what to do and how to do it but she's more in the print world <laughs> the print world and um, I just went into broadcast because I saw the vision in there and trying to make people's stories come to life on the TV yeah that's me Thank you. Alex please hello everybody <laughs> if you couldn't tell them I'm radio but <laughs> but I, before we start I just want everybody to take a breath let's just appreciate that we're here. I know I'm super, super grateful. Um, being represented on any platform, especially s such a big one as like a university is something that is bewildering. Um, but a little bit about me, I am the founder of a nonprofit called Sidenas Grotto. We provide menstrual hygiene items to women and girls in need. And um, last Saturday, I actually was out there um, giving out those items. And seeing those women out there who needed those items reminds me why we need to represent them. Because sometimes they can't be represented. Um, so I think just being able to even use my voice to speak up for those who can't talk, even if it's in something as simple as like playing a song that might mean something to somebody. I think like that's the most important thing for me. And I don't know, radio does that for me. <laughs> so, so Alex, let me uh, just follow up here. So. Does that mean you, what drew you to the uh, media world was a cause? Okay. <laughs> I think that more than a cause, it was just uh, a calling. Um, I think that God pushed me forward to represent those who can't be represented, and that's just why I exist. And as we see, like, and, and you'll learn a little bit more, but in the media world, like, especially with social media, we have that chance to represent those who can't be represented. Whether it's a photo, a video, a voice, a recording, like, we get the chance to do that. And if I, Alex Hernandez, can represent those people in any way, shape, or form, I think that I've been given the platform to do so. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Nicole. Hi guys, I'm Nicole Shaker. Um, so I'm a journalism major here at NOVA, but I also study computer science. So I have my feet kind of in STEM as well as media. And I love both fields. Um, but what drew me to media specifically was really just my love of writing. I always grew up writing. Um, I remember when I was younger, whenever there was like a holiday or something, when I didn't know what to get my brother for his birthday, I would just write him a poem because <laughs> that's just all I knew how to do and I just loved it. So um, as I grew up, I explored you know, how I can write, how I can get my writing out there and I discovered the newspaper and I discovered how much I love it. So yeah, I've just been pursuing that ever since. Thank 
question was actually why you chose the field you chose, newspaper, radio, and TV. You already answered that. So let me move on to Alex, please. Why did you choose radio? Okay, so I'm about to take you back two years. Um, it was my first week at NOVA, and I was a little scared girl with her paper in her hand looking for her classes. And I ended up walking into um, the field outside, like where you guys came in, and I remember seeing this guy playing music in the lawn, and he was rocking out. Like he was playing music, he was having so much fun, and I remember thinking, I want what he has. And then later that week, I ended up stumbling upon the radio room in Rosenthal, and I don't even know, I had never been in radio previously, and I just signed up and became a DJ that day. Um, and then, the, and this is the last one, which is why I think it is a calling. Me and my dad used to ride every day to work um, and to school. And I remember that he would always like, oh, what if when you're in university, you go and do radio? Turns out that the radio station that we used to listen to was Noah's radio station growing up in school. So I don't know. I think the world has a funny way of bringing things back. So, so yeah, that's why. Love it. Pauline, yes. Paulina, you said uh, what drew you to the middle world was really your sister in print, so what made you choose TV? Um, so going way back in high school, we had three options, journalism one, journalism three, I mean two and three, and I figured um, if I would really want to know if I want to be in journalism, I should take the hardest one, so I picked three, not knowing that it was just like that's how they label it. So I went into the broadcast journalism room um, in Coral Springs Charter, um, to in Coral Springs, and um, they threw me in there and they put me in front of a camera. It was really, really scary, but then once you get over that and you, you um, look at the video that you see, um, and you just get a sense of being proud of yourself, and then you go out and you find other stories of people. So that would kind of drew me into the media, just grabbing people visually and bringing out those stories. Thank you. So, continuing with Paulina, just because the mic is with you, um, consciously, directly or not, you're telling stories of other women. Uh, uh, Alex talked about how it's important to give a voice to other women. So why is it, Paulina, important for women to tell stories of other women? Um, so. Earlier, um, when, the, when we were opening, I wrote down that um, it's important to tell it through your own eyes. So you have, you know, you want a woman to tell that story because only she can really understand that other person, um, either on the on the mic in the radio or in the paper or in, in front of a camera. So it's very important for other women to bring up other women and um, share those stories because I feel like they understand the most and that they can communicate that to the general public. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alex? So, um, recently me and Paulina worked on a package where we were working with a local store. And this is a local woman-owned store. The business owners are 17 and they sell a niche item, which is K-pop albums. And I love K-pop, we're both Latina, we went, but it, it's something about how there's only one person that can do that exact thing. And finding those people that are in these niche little nitty gritty groups is like the joy of working in media because then you get to give them a voice. And more importantly, being a woman and being able to like stand in solidarity and give that representation is everything. So. I think that as women, we have a responsibility to be the voice for those who can't speak, and we have a responsibility to show the things that aren't like represented at all. So, yeah. Thank you. Nico? Um, yeah, so when I, when I think of this question, why it's important for women to tell stories of other women, I honestly think of my background. Um, so I'm from Egypt, and in Egypt, uh, women often don't get educated. They don't learn how to communicate and how to have a voice for themselves. Um, actually, I went on a mission trip to Egypt last summer and I learned that if a child doesn't have a father but he still has a mother, he's still considered an orphan because that's how little identity women have. 
Like they can't make money for themselves most of the time. They can't support their own children without a husband. And I think that just summarizes precisely why it's important for women to tell stories of other women because here I'm obviously so blessed and privileged that I do get to get educated and have a voice and be put on a platform. So it's just my duty to share the, the stories of women who can't, especially women of my culture who I identify with. That's amazing. So how are you actually doing that? Um, well, uh, when I went on the mission trip, part of my work there was journaling and kind of blogging about my experience there. So I got to write about it. Um, there's actually, there might be one or two pieces online. I went um, as part of a charity called Coptic Orphans. So I got to write about it a little and um, even just journaling and sharing my experience to my friends by word of mouth is really important just to keep people aware. Um, of what's going on and what we're really blind to see when we're so privileged and we're given so many opportunities. Love it. Um, uh, I'm going to continue with a couple of more questions, but I'd like for everybody in the audience, this is supposed to be engaging, so I'd like for everybody in the audience to start uh, making mental notes of questions you'd like to ask, and I'll open to the audience in, uh, in a couple of minutes, okay? Unless somebody already has a quick question. Not yet? Okay, we need you to come up with questions, okay? Uh, so the next question I have for each one of you, let me start with who has the mic, Nicole. What's the biggest challenge you face today as a woman in the media? Um, well, like I said, I have been given a lot of opportunities and I'm really blessed, so I haven't been faced with a lot of like debilitating challenges and nothing I can't overcome. Um, but I think the first thing that comes to mind, especially as a journalist, is I have to interview a lot of people, and that's, that's been my biggest challenge, not because of the interviewing itself, but uh, just as a woman, gaining the respect of the people I'm interviewing, especially as a young woman and a minority woman is in interviewing people who are usually a lot older than me. I interview a lot of, I don't know, old men in high positions <laughs> for these stories I'm writing, so it's really, really important to present myself just professionally, confidently, and that was really difficult for me in the beginning, but you know, as I've gone and practiced with it, um, just keeping it in the back of my mind, like, you know, I can't slip, if one slip, you know, I'll lose the respect. So just keeping it in the back of my mind, to just always just present myself confidently, and I have seen myself improve in that. Interesting, you said that, you know, interviewing, dealing with powerful men. How about powerful women? Mm. I, don't, I don't interview a lot of them. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me just open for a second to the audience because this is really interesting as we're talking about women in the media, women's uh, history month. So anybody has a comment about that? Being intimidated by powerful men but not powerful women? Okay, you got something to say? Please do. You know, it's funny because as you were talking about uh, interviewing powerful men, I had that same thought of, well, what about women? <laughs> um, so, as you guys, you're, you're college students and um, there's obviously a future after this. What do you feel um, will be your greatest um, contribution to media as a woman, as we go in, in, in times are changing, where do you see your future contribution being in using what you're using right now? Uh, my future contribution in the media? Um, I mean, it's hard to say right now. I don't, um, like I said, I'm studying two different things and I don't really know what my career path is going to be. Um, but even if I'm not like a traditional journalist working at a newspaper, even if, um, you know, I'm just using the, me the media based on social media or different things. I think the most powerful thing I can do is to just um, make an impact, however that may be, whether that be sharing the stories from my culture, like I was saying, or um, other things like humanitarian work. I just really want to be of service wherever I am, because that's really my main goal in life, to just um, serve and let go of my own needs and desires, uh, whether that is through media or through my other career path. Um, that's, it's really vague, but I just want to be of service. <laughs> that's 
great. Alex, uh, if you want to add to that question, and please also answer what's the biggest challenge of you, you, say, you face as a woman. Well, what I want to add, or what I want my contribution to be, the first thing that I thought about, I want to get the information that's in English out in Spanish. Um, so at the radio station, my name is DJ Sirena, which means mermaid in Spanish. And my whole show actually is a whole international show, getting music that's from other cultures, other languages, and putting it on the radio waves. A lot of these artists are great artists, they just aren't played. Um, and that kind of goes with a bunch of things in media. There's great content, but most of the time it's in a different language, so it's not listened to or it's not watched. And as a Hispanic woman, where my family is from the coast of Barranquilla in Colombia, this tiny little place with, that's so loud, um, I want to be able to add to those things, such as, for me specifically, the period poverty. I want to be able to teach people about menstruation and not it be taboo in Spanish. You know, because a lot of the times, like, you don't get to hear those things in a public setting, much less in another language. Because most of the time, it's not allowed to be talked about. And by the way, I did not know that about you going on mission trips. That's yeah. awesome. And yeah. it makes me emotional because I feel the same way. I want to represent my culture. I want to do my diligence. And I think the obstacle is a lot of the times they see the face. They don't see the heart or the story. And that's my biggest obstacle. It's like, oh, they just they just see me first starters, but they think I have no, that I'm airheaded. So, and that comes with being a woman because they think it's all gowns and dresses and makeup. When it's like, no, there's so much to us. We're so, we're. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, but we have so much depth to us that most people won't take five minutes to find out that depth. So I think that that's the biggest obstacle, and the contribution. <laughs> Thank you. Paulina? Um, just to add on to that, um, one challenge is there's not a lot of people, um, at least in broadcast, that look like me. So when you're turning on the TV, um, it's a male anchor. Um, but now they're getting better about that. But um, like I said, there's not a lot of women in the media, period. Um, and if there are, they're not getting paid equally as men. So um, what I would like to contribute further in the future um, would be helping you know, the young, young women be in the media and earn money, the same as men. Mm. That's my goal, and um, right now, so far, to contribute to that is like helping younger people who are freshmen get into the media, because that's how I started. Um, someone took me in high school and was like, you're gonna be a part of my team, and we're gonna do this newscast, and um, you're just gonna have to learn on the go, but everything's gonna be all right. But looking for people who are older than you and guiding you, um, that's actually how I got into SUTV. I knew someone who was a part of SUTV, formerly, well, formerly SUTV, now Mako TV. Um, and you know, just having people out there to give you a hand and give you a chance. Thank you, Paulina. So on that, how do you define, what would be success for this young women you want to have? What would be success? Um, just having there's having more women like me in the media, like Alex, like Nicole, telling stories of multiple women of different perspectives here in South Florida. It could be in South Florida, we have a diverse community that we don't really know about because they're not people who look like us telling those stories. That to me is fascinating because I come from traditional journalism and we have three young women here talking about how they see their job in the media and it's a lot about serving people through their words, through their work. And it's not about just giving the news, but helping and serving. I find this very interesting. Um, uh, how do you define success, Alex? Uh, I think kind of highlighting what Paulina just said, equity. We need equity, we need equal, and it's not equality because we don't want everybody to have or at least in my mind, I want equity. I want the playing field to be so equal that it, it's not that everything's the same to the point of nothing's different, but it's the opportunity to go out and make your story. Because we don't want the same stories. I mean, each one of us have a different mind of what success is, but each one of us know that it's seeing more of us up here. There's three of us, and there's so many other women who make DCMA, make NSU even, and, and 
everybody knows a woman. I mean, probably the most powerful one is the one that birthed you. Um, and that's the importance of us, but sometimes we're forgotten. So success to me is making sure that at least one, because if we impact one woman in our life, we're impacting thousands. I mean, millions, billions. Huh? So it's just reminding ourselves that we all want the opportunity to create the stories that we want, because it'll be important to somebody. And what's the secret of your success? God. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, a great family, and that, that goes to everything. The family I have sitting up here, I wouldn't be who I am without my parents or my family pushing me behind me. And then the family that's in this DCMA team. I mean, wow, what a great place to be. What a great place to create a story. What a great place to have an opportunity to make a change. Because you guys give us the opportunity, so thank you. Um, so, on defining success, um, I really think it's just making an impact that you're proud of. If that impact is equity, or whatever it is, you may be, you have, may have like a more niche kind of charity section, which is cool, and whether it's locally or globally, just, I don't know, it's just making an impact that you're proud of, to me. Um, I guess the secret of my success, also God. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's also just recognizing the blessings he places in front of me because if you don't seize the opportunities when they come, mm. you know, they're, they're going to go away, you know? So if I hadn't taken the editor-in-chief position and I completely thought I didn't deserve it, <laughs> then I wouldn't be here where I am now. My secret to my success that I learned from my sister, and um, it's never give up, always be loud, and just stay persistent. I feel like um, when you ask other people where are you, you know, just kind of very vaguely, like, do you think I should do this? Instead of relying on someone else's opinion, you should just rely on your own and just know that you can. And the only person that you can't, um, that can stop you is yourself. The mountain is you. So um, I always just tell myself every day uh, that only I can define my success and no one else. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, why don't you open up to other questions, please? Yes. Okay, so my question is, what are some core values that have led you through the years and that have put you in the position uh, of success that you are now? Uh, do you have a question for each one? Of this is the same question for all of them, or do you have? Are you directing it to one of them? Well, I'm Team Paulina here, but <laughs> <laughs> honestly, anybody that wants to answer. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I'm Team Paula, so. <laughs> um, one of um, my core values is my family values. Um, so um, just keeping in mind that I have a family and they care about me and um, making time for me, making time for them because in the media world, you're gonna get wrapped into it and you're not gonna have a lot of time to, you know, when there's breaking news or something needs to get done. Um, I'm, I'm sure like just having family values that you have to make time for your family. Um, another one is just staying persistent and leadership. Yeah. Same, retweet. <laughs> but I think that family, of course, God first, family first, and those values I feel like are intertwined, but I think also just respecting everybody in the room. Um, a lot of the time we walk past by, we walk past people, we don't uh, acknowledge them, and most of the time the people who are helping edit, people who are helping film, people who are in the background, Sometimes we're women, but we have a great team, and that also means respecting the guys who work with us. It's a beautiful thing to highlight the women, but we have so many empowered guys who are empowering us to be better. So shout out to y'all, and uh, I think it's just respecting those who are around you, because a lot of the time in the media world, you're not respected. You're just told to create rather than look at who created it. So I think that when we look at that and we can respect each other, it, it doesn't mean listen and do everything they say, but respect, understand, and 
For me in radio, I'm constantly talking, but I've learned to be slow to speak because sometimes, hey, you could you can slip up in every in any second. So it's like think about what you're doing, but respect the art, respect the person, and respect the people around you. Yeah, I'll just keep it brief. God first, family first, but um, also it's been really important to me is balance. Um, so as you know, as Chris mentioned, I'm not the editor-in-chief anymore because I stepped down and that was something I had to sacrifice to focus on my school life and my spiritual life and other things. Um, so I think it's really important to recognize um, as how much you can do before the work becomes something you're not proud of anymore. Um, so yeah, that's been really important for, for me um, because um, I'm still able to make work that I'm proud of, still able to contribute to the newspaper, though on a smaller scale, it's still an impactful scale. Mm. Thank you. Uh, questions, please. Yes, please. Hi, good evening, ladies. So, we live in a world of increasing polarization, mm -hmm. and um, news comes at us rapidly, it comes at us from different formats, as you represent tonight. Um, how would you uh, how would you suggest that we in this room lift and empower each other in a time where we're often separated either geographically, um, physically, um, sometimes spiritually? How, how can we come together to empower and um, this question can be for all of you um, but I would just mention that I wish I'd had your clarity at your age. So it's, it's really uh, inspiring to sit here tonight and hear you. Thank you for your, your question. Um, I really like this one too because um, we're, at, we're at a time where we're getting information more than ever before. We're getting um, tons of mediums from radio to print to broadcast. Um, it's just important to realize that you can turn off for a second. You can put the phone down for a second mm -hmm. and just be in your own world um, and just pretty much just, you know, talk to your family members because I feel like a lot of the reasons why we're polarized is because um, we're stuck on social media or we're stuck on the internet. So just kind of taking a break and just thinking critically for yourself, what are my values? What are my core, what am I, is this critical thinking? And understanding, going back to what Alex says, like respecting everybody's views, and um, just because they believe this or they believe that, just understand that they are human too, they have emotions. Um, so just understanding that as more information is coming out, new AI is coming out, um, there's going to be more polarization, so just understand where you're coming from, what's your story, what are your values, and just remembering respect. Um, wow, don't you love it when she talks? It's awesome. I mean, you too, bro. Um, but for me, I think it's reminding ourselves to give people grace because a lot of the time, kind of like what Paulina says, we're looking at our phones and our computers and they're just words. But when we realize those people around us need that grace, need that peace and love and, and empowerment even, um, it kind of changes our worldview. Somebody very important to me, aka my mother, said you are the five people that surround you. And I think that when we impact those five people slash are impacted by them, it'll create who you are. So if you have people who are empowering you, uplifting you, telling you you can do it, you are great, you will achieve this, hey, that's gonna spew right back at you. That's gonna come out of you and you're gonna say those same things back at them. And slowly those circles become connected circles. So I think it's remembering who's around me, how can I give them grace, and how am I, how am I like reflecting them? Because a lot of the times, we don't treat ourselves with the same grace and it's like, at the core, it's like, what we're throwing out into the world is what we're saying to ourselves. So, just give, your gra give yourself grace, y'all. <laughs> so, what comes to mind for me, um, I used to meditate a lot, and I remember one time, the guided meditation guy, he said something really beautiful. He said um, something about the shared human condition, which I thought was a beautiful way to put it. Um, because it's so easily we forget, especially when someone angers us or when we don't like someone or we're mad at people. 
Um, it's so easy to forget that we're, that they're struggling the same way, if not worse. Maybe they've been through, maybe they're going through something right now. Maybe that's why they gave you that cold look or something along those lines. So I think it's really important to kind of, I guess, keep that idea in mind that we're, we're all walking through life together. This is a shared thing. The world is not isolated and that gives, makes it so much easier to just understand people. Thank you. Alison, that I'm very impressed with the clarity. I wish I had it at their age. Yeah. We've been all so confused. <laughs> <laughs> so this is absolutely amazing. Uh, so uh, do we have one more question? I'm sorry. Yes, I'll, I'll come around. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to be on camera. Can you have the mic? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just a small question. It's so good. Um, I have a simple question for the three women up front. Um, as someone who's also uh, working in media and has to pursue a degree in communications, and as a small woman, I get very intimidated by uh, both the men and women in the business because everyone expects you to be a certain way. I was always told that we have to always fight, but people think sometimes we're tearing the other side down. What do you think is the best way, like, how would you say is the best way for us to show that we're not trying to tear anyone down, we're trying to lift everyone up? Mm. Because I've seen people say that, oh, we're trying to tear the men down to rise us, to make ourselves better, but we're not. And is there a possible way that we could show that in a stronger manner? Sorry, I'm not going to speak to people, I'm sorry. You're doing great. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Thank you. Are you here at NSU? Okay, come see us at Student Media so you can start working with us as well. <laughs> All right, come see us tomorrow. <laughs> UC 328. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Nice meeting you. Please. So, I get this a lot. A lot of the times people say, and this is just a, char a characteristic that has been placed on what is female or what is woman. We're loud and we're trying to create problems. Whether you agree with it or not, that's most of the time what they see, especially if it's a Latina. This is something I struggle with because it's like, I'm not trying to fight, I'm trying to get my point across. So I've learned to take a breather and realize that the other person or the other side is just trying to tell me how they're seeing it as well. So I think we have two ears to listen, one mouth to talk listening first, and then, hey, maybe we can work something out, because the middle is always better than nothing. So, by the way, you did a great job. Thank you for using your voice, and I respect your ability to talk, and I respect everybody in here. And I think that if we have that mindset moving forward, I respect you, maybe I don't understand you yet, but we can get there. And the middle is always better, so. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Question. <laughs> how, how can um, how can we get our point across to the other side when it always seems um, like we're trying to fight? Oh, so I do agree with what you said about um, finding the middle ground, but I also agree about um, making your voice heard. And because of the pandemic, I actually my sister came back home from Syracuse, and I got to see how she worked in the newsroom on Zoom. So a lot of the times it's the sports writers yelling back and forth at you know the female writers, and my sister just kept repeating herself, repeating herself, repeating. And it's like never giving up, never lowering your voice, and always making sure that your your point is getting across because your point is as valid as theirs. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's also respect, but mainly just you know you have the right to have your own voice. Mm. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Uh, well, it's a bit of a tough question for me because I'm a pretty quiet person, just naturally. And I, th I think that's, uh, there's something really beautiful about a quiet leadership and a quiet confidence and gaining people's respect without necessarily like yelling and repeating yourself. Sometimes you have to, and I'm really bad at that. But <laughs> um, I, think it's, I think the most important thing is really just presenting yourself always confidently, professionally. And even before you talk to someone, just if you have that image of yourself, it's going to make it easier to get your point across right off the bat. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the time I'm concerned about their class, and I want to give five minutes to mingle a little bit with them if you, you have a kind of, okay? I wanted to ask you all this question. If you could have an exclusive interview with any woman in the, in the history of the world, who would that be and why? Ouch. <laughs> History. History. For me. Um, and this is a, a faith-based question, but it, it kind of ties into like my menstrual equity thing. There's a story in the Bible that talks about a woman who bled, and she bled like for almost 30 years. Don't quote me on the, on the time, but she bled for a long time. And it says that she touched the mantle of, of course, Jesus, and she was, you know, saved, or she, she got healed. I would love to talk. It's one of the only so prominent stories of menstrual equity and what it means to be going through menstruation, especially in a time like that. And it's a quiet story. It's only a parable. But to me, it changed my life because my field of work was represented there. I would love to first thank you for sharing that. Um, I would love to interview Michelle Obama um, just because obviously she's awesome. And um, also, like in high school, we were like all we had to change our lunch system and we had to eat healthier, so she's the reason why. Um, I ate salad every day, so I was like, <laughs> I'm a skinny because of her. <laughs> so I want to interview her. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Paulina. Um, so my answer, um, you might not know her. Her name is Nermeen Riyadh. She is the founder of the charity that I went on a mission trip with this summer, Coptic Orphans. And I've seen her share her story a couple times of how she went to Egypt and she saw the inequality there. She saw the suffering there. And she made a difference, like right, right away. She that's like the first charity directed towards Coptic children who are orphaned. So I would just love to talk to her, gain her wisdom, and I don't use her wisdom to try and make an impact of my own. The three of you are amazing, and the more I know about you, the more impressed I am, and the more honored I feel to be working with the three of you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to, I'd like to ask Josh to for the final closing remarks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, wow, I, I kind of feel like you should have the last word, right? I mean, they, they were fabulous. Um, I, the question didn't come to me, but the question is about the secret to your success. And one of the secrets to my success is surrounding myself with really smart people. So this was fun. <laughs> Congratulations. We really appreciated all the time that all of you gave. Um, and again, thank you for everyone uh, who took the time to come out today. I hope you will look a little bit more at our Mako Media Network, because what they produce is really outstanding and you'll enjoy it. So let's make it, right? All right. Thank you so much to all the organizers of this event. Thank you guys for coming out. Like we are so profoundly thankful. Thankful to everybody who's with us and like thank you for listening to our stories as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that was really great, and we're very excited to have these type of events. This is a great partnership. Hopefully, it's a budding partnership between the three groups. Well, Broward County Libraries have stuck with us instead of college. <laughs> but it's, get, it's getting those two together, and we hope we can do a lot more. Um, I really appreciate and enjoy all formats of your media. Um, big, uh, big support.